the Honorable John Zhang, Financial Secretary of Hong Kong SAR. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, today I have the enviable task of introducing, introducing Honorable John Zhang. In fact, he does not need any introduction. He is the Financial Supremo of Hong Kong. But don't be fooled by his white hair. He's actually much younger than I. <laughs> I should know that because uh, we went to the same uh, secondary school. Um, now, John is an architect by training. I don't know how many of you know that. So he knows all about building solid foundations. And of course, Hong Kong is one of the best managed economies in the world uh, with solid foundation, especially for our banking and financial sector, which has weathered many, many storms. And we all feel safe with the purse strings controlled by John in a pair of safe hands. But some of his critics will say that John is not aggressive enough. Let me tell you that behind that facade, looks like a philosopher and a poet, he's actually quite aggressive. He is a champion fencer and a kung fu expert. <laughs> but John assures me that he always keeps his power under control. <laughs> because he once said to me, Jack, what is power without control? So today we are very honored that John will come and tell us more about his management philosophy. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable John Zhang. Thank you very much, Jack. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, good afternoon. I'm delighted to have this opportunity to speak to you all on this, uh, the last day of the Asian Investment Conference. And my thanks to uh, Credit Suisse for organizing this important and useful forum. Done once, it is a considerable accomplishment, but done 19 times in a row, I call it a habit. So I'm truly grateful to you good people for again bringing a wealth of distinguished opinion leaders and influential investors to Hong Kong, Asia's premier international financial center. Jack wanted me to speak on the topic of a vision for the future of Hong Kong. So what came to my mind right away was the vision of Luke training with his master and those famous words of Yoda, and I quote for you, difficult to see, always in motion is the future, unquote. And that, by the way, if you remember, was from episode five, The Empire Strikes Back, <laughs> that was shown back in 1980. <clears throat> that shows my age. While in that movie, Yoda, the legendary Jedi in Hong Kong, we call him the Sifu, with the near almighty force, had trouble with the future. And I believe in reality, many of us here today can now see quite clearly the dark side of the current economic galaxy. After all the panels and keynotes uh, over the past few days, I assume there is a broad consensus in this room that global economic growth is expected to remain modest and uneven in 2016, with significant downside risk, risk looming. Of particular threat, it seems to me, is the increasingly complicated monetary environment, given the uncertain pace of the US interest rate hikes and divergent monetary policies among major central banks. These together with associated uncertainties could keep the global financial markets volatile, slowing the already weak global macro environment. Geopolitical tensions in various parts of the world are also causes for concern, and so is one odd businessman in North America with a trademark hairstyle and serious ambition. All that and more is likely to constrain Hong Kong's economic performance, certainly in the near term. We also need to stay alert to the sustained slowdown in our exports, as well as the number of our inbound tourists. And that could have repercussions on the overall economy and our job market. 
the uncertain global economic outlook, coupled with asset market fluctuations, may hamper local consumption and investor sentiment as well. In light of this daunting macroeconomic environment, I forecast the Hong Kong economy to grow by 1% to 2% this year. And that is a drop from last year's 2.4% and the 3.4% that we have been able to achieve over the past decade. And to help us get through the anticipated difficult times ahead, I have in my 2016-17 budget that was announced at the end of February, allocated nearly $39 billion for tax and short-term relief measures. The package of measures, together with other spending initiatives in the budget, which should provide fiscal stimulus effect of boosting our GDP by 1.1%, should help enhance local consumption and support local businesses, in particular, our small and medium-sized enterprises. No doubt, <clears throat> the world's economies will all face substantial headwinds in 2016 amid the unsteady and, un and uncertain global economic outlook. Hong Kong will be not, would not be an exception. However, I firmly believe that the future of Hong Kong is in no way as negative as some international rating agencies have recently suggested, and I'm certain all of you can see the reasons. In its staff report released in January this year, the IMF concluded that Hong Kong's sound economic fundamentals, <clears throat> robust financial regulatory regime, resilient financial and banking sectors, as well as our strong fiscal position, will continue to enable the economy to embrace the challenges ahead. All these strengths that we have, together with the link exchange rate system, that we have maintained since 1983 give Hong Kong strong buffers to deal with near-term challenges while laying the foundation for steady growth and healthy job creation in the medium term. And looking ahead, Asia, and in particular China, will continue to be the main engine of growth for the world economy. Based on the data from the IMF, the mainland economy contributed 43% of world trade growth and 35% of global economic growth in 2014. The Asian economies, with many of them being emerging markets with huge potential, will continue to be a key source of growth and stability for the global economy in the, coming tw in the 21st century. Since the 2008 financial tsunami, the global economy has undergone sweeping changes. The Asian market are now playing a much more important and influential role with the global economic center of gravity shifting towards the east. At the same time, breakthroughs in innovative technologies in the form of information and communication technology, AI, biotech and robotics have brought about paradigm shifts in different economic and social spheres, changing our daily lives as well as our business modalities. These two new forces together have changed the global economic landscape and gradually carving out what I call a new global economic order that offers a new direction as well as a new modality of growth and bringing at the same time new opportunities for both traditional industries as well as emerging industries. Under this new economic order, Hong Kong will continue to take full advantage of our location at the heart of Asia, our well-oiled financial infrastructure and well-recognized regulatory regime, and continue to play a vital role in the global financial market alongside the other major centers of finance. Our extensive business, cultural, as well as social ties to the mainland and the enormous Asian market give us a unique edge in directing capital between Asia and the rest of the world. Hong Kong's strength in IPO fundraising, banking services and renminbi business is not such a well-kept secret anymore. Last year, we ranked first globally in equity funds raised through IPOs. Over 70 of the top 100 banks are located here and operating well in Hong Kong. 
and our banking system handles some three quarters of the cross-border renminbi transactions. According to the UN World Investment Report 2015, Hong Kong for the first time came second in global foreign direct investments with record amounts of inflows and outflows at 103 billion US dollars and 143 billion US dollars respectively. Our asset management sector will continue to benefit from economic growth and wealth creation here in Asia, as well as the mainland's increasing financial market liberalization. At the end of 2014, assets under management here reached a record 2.3 trillion US dollars, a year-on-year -year growth of 10.5%. Funds from overseas investors continue to increase and recorded growth of 9% in 2014, accounting for over 70% of the fund management business. And that's only the beginning. The government and our regulators continue to remove limitations in our legal structure, continue to broaden the product base and facilitate a more enabling tax environment. Our goal is to sharpen Hong Kong's competitive edge as a premier international asset management center. We have allowed private equity funds to enjoy profits tax exemptions available to offshore funds. A new legal framework introducing an open-ended fund company structure is also in the works. And this, more and more, will help attract funds to Hong Kong, broadening the variety and scope of the business while facilitating investor portfolio allocation. We welcome more multinational and mainland enterprises to establish corporate treasury centers in Hong Kong. And to that end, we are working closely with our legislature to allow interest deductions in profits tax for intra-group financing business of corporations. And we are looking too to reduce the profits tax of qualifying corporate treasury centers by 50%. As China's global financial center, we shall continue to work with the mainland authorities to explore ways to open up new channels for the two-way cross-boundary flow of renminbi funds in order to tap the massive opportunity arising from the internationalization of the renminbi. The launch of the Shanghai Hong Kong Stock Connect in late 2014 and the introduction of the mainland Hong Kong mutual recognition of funds arrangement last year have raised the mutual access between the mainland and Hong Kong capital markets to another high level. And then there is the grand and visionary Belt Row Initiative spearheaded by President Xi in 2013. This initiative, which aims to promote economic, political and cultural connectivity, as well as cooperation among the 60 plus countries spanning Asia, Africa and Europe, will provide new impetus for Asia's longer term development. Through the Belt Row Initiative, we expect to see even stronger economic and trade activities deepening financial integration, as well as soaring investment in infrastructure, such as railways, highways, ports, and power plants in the entire region. Hong Kong's financial services sector can contribute to, as well as benefit from, the financing of these infrastructure projects. Indeed, I have asked the Hong Kong Monetary Authority to establish an office, kind of facilitating platform, to coordinate the interests of investors, banks, and the financial services sector in putting together financing packages for the many Belt Road infrastructure projects. And the Hong Kong government's third sukut will be issued at an appropriate time to meet the financing needs of the Islamic market. And there are, to be sure, a good many of them along the Belt Road. The enthusiastic Enthusiastic response to the establishment of the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, the AIIB, underlines the widespread interest in and enormous potential of the Belt and Road. The AIIB, which just commenced operation only in January this year, will in time become the key financial institution supporting infrastructural development along the Belt and Road. 
and Hong Kong will continue to discuss with the AIIB and the relevant authorities regarding Hong Kong's participation in AIIB's work and on how our expertise in capital market financing, our expertise in asset management and dispute resolution can contribute to the work of the AIIB. So far, responses from the authorities have been encouraging. Under the new economic order, the fund also the future also rests with innovation and technology. In the world of financial services, the application and development of fintech will definitely be the focus of this ongoing digital revolution. Some studies have predicted that global investment in fintech will surge from 12 billion US dollars in 2014 to more than 46 billion dollars in 2020. And I believe that you will agree that Hong Kong has what it takes to make fintech successful here. I have announced a host of measures in my recent budgets to nurture the development of fintech in Hong Kong. These include the creation of a dedicated team under Invest Hong Kong to help startups, investors and R&D institutions establish a presence here in the city. They also include programs to nurture the next generation of fintech talent the enhancement of communications with the fintech community as well as the development of cutting-edge technologies for financial services from cybersecurity to a blockchain. Hong Kong now counts a dozen of private innovation labs, incubators and, and accelerator programs, including the renowned Accenture, Nest, as well as the fintech innovation lab launched by the Commonwealth Bank of Australia earlier this year. These projects are supplementing nicely the many programs offered by government-funded organizations such as Cyberport in Hong Kong. The Cyberport, by the way, will roll out targeted measures to support fintech startups, including a dedicated space of 3,000 square meters, support to 150 startups over the next five years, and fintech training camps at overseas institutions for our university students. All in all, we shall encourage the growth of talent in finance, entrepreneurship and technology, promoting Hong Kong as a fintech hub, consolidating the competitiveness of our financial services industry and offering consumers new options in managing the money, their future. So ladies and gentlemen, Hong Kong of course has long punched well above our weight in the global economy thanks to our resourceful, endlessly adaptable human capital. Thanks too to our highly internationalized and transparent system girded by the rule of law and an independent judiciary. Our simple and low tax regime, as well as the level playing field, have also attracted hundreds of overseas companies to set up their business here in Hong Kong every year. Contrary to some of the somewhat misguided opinions out there, the close linkage between the economies of Hong Kong and the mainland would continue to help realize the massive potential. So it isn't China risk, it is indeed China opportunity. As we continue to consolidate Hong Kong's competitive advantages and maintain the strengths in our systems, we are in a good position to benefit from the structural rebalancing in the mainland's economy from investment to consumption as the increase in demand in services will create even more new business opportunities for a service-oriented economy like Hong Kong. I'm confident that Hong Kong is on the right track in moving forward and in sustaining Hong Kong's long-term prosperity. Even without lightsabers in your hands, I'm certain that the force is with you right here in Hong Kong, in Asia. So I wish you all the best of business in 2016, and I look forward to seeing you again here next year at an other Asian investment conference. But I hope that you would have an opportunity to stay around this weekend to watch the Rugby Sevens. And <laughs> indeed, that is something not to miss, is three solid days of beer drinking. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>